So I'm going to start speeding up uh, how I go through these problems. When you need to pause the video to work on calculations, pause it and then start it up again. If you need to rewind, please rewind it. That's the whole intention of this. This learning format is completely different than being in a classroom because in a classroom you can ask the instructor a question, but the instructor is not going to repeat for infinity the same thing over and over and over again. However, with this video, you can have me repeat the same thing over and over and over again, and I don't get tired, <laughs> which is a perfect scenario for you as a student because you get to see the problems happening over and over and over again. You get to practice it, find out how it works, and become an expert at subnetting and IP addressing. Here's our next problem. 10.200.0.0 slash 13. This time we need 200 networks. So let's break up our address into binary. And what we find is that our network address is 10.200.0.0. And our broadcast address is 10.207.255.255. Well, that's an unusual address as well. But if we look at the binary, find out where the dividing line between our network and host portion are, we find out that this is exactly right. There are all ones in my host portion here for my broadcast address, the very last address in my network. There's all zeros in my host portion for my network address, the very first address in my network. What this means is we have 19 bits available to modify. This is a lot of bits. So let's pull up our calculator. We need 200 networks are required. If I look up at my networks, I find that 128 is too few, 256 is too many, but we have to have at least 256, so we need to borrow 8 bits. Let's set up the problem. We'll put our given information at the top, so my given network address, right below that, my given mask. Then I draw my line between my network and host portion. Then I calculate my mask. So I take my first 13 bits, which were given to me by the ISP. I add 8 more bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I put zeros for the rest of my subnet mask. And I draw a line between my network and host portion of my calculated mask. Now I can start calculating networks. We start with network 0. Network 0, we put all zeros in our borrowed bit section zeros in the host portion, and there's network number zero. Network number 20. Network number 20, we are going to convert 20 into binary and put it in these eight bits. Now notice, once again, in this problem, our eight bits that we've borrowed go right over the middle of an eight-bit boundary. And notice how I'm caring. I'm not. <laughs> I'm using those eight bits pulling them out of the IP address, converting 20 to binary in those 8 bits, and then putting it back into the IP address. I'm completely ignoring the fact that there's an 8-bit boundary in the middle there. Notice I don't even draw a line there. I only put the space there to make it easier to see these long strings of 32 ones and zeros. All right, It's just meant to make it easier to look at and also make it easier to convert from binary to decimal when we need to do that step. Okay, so network number 31 now. So we convert 31 to binary, which is 11111. Put that into 8 bits. Put all zeros in my host portion to get my network address. Two more networks we need, network number 48. So 48 in binary is 00110. 0, 0, 0. Put all zeros in my host portion. That tells me my network address. The last network I need here is network 199. So to get that, network number 199 is going to be 11000111 in binary. The middle eight bits here. Put all zeros in the host portion. And that tells me my network address. Notice that my given network portion of my address, the first 13 bits. Notice that regardless of what number network I calculate here, the first 13 bits of the address are always identical. It's our eight borrowed bits that are the ones that change. All right, let's move on to converting this then from binary to decimal and take a look at what we got. Network number 20, 
I'm skipping network zero because network zero is the same as the given network with our calculated mask. So network zero in this case is 10.200.0.0 slash 21. So network number 20, 10.200.160.0 slash 21. Network 31 is 10.200.248.0 slash 21. 48 is 10.201.128.0 slash 21. And 199 is 10.206.56.0 slash 201. Notice how the decimal numbers don't seem to make sense. You don't worry about that because the binary makes sense. All right, the binary is what the computer uses. It's what our router uses. We only do the decimal conversion to make it easier for human beings to see the address. We have ruined the ability to make it easy for human beings to see the address in IP version 6, but that's a whole other story to get used to, and we'll talk about that in a later video.